Hello, it's Maxine. Today I am doing a 50 signs I was an autistic child video, um, which will probably leave a lot wondering right away. How on earth did you have that many signs and were not diagnosed with autism? But um, I'm 35 years old, so when I was young, that word wasn't commonly used. I feel like by the time I was about age 10, I had heard it a little bit, but it was more so used towards um, possibly level three um, autistic children, which could be nonverbal, um, needing even more um, assistance than some. So that was my knowledge of autism. I didn't know that there were different levels to it. I didn't know really any of the signs. I didn't learn about autism properly until I was in my probably late 20s to early 30s. And I was officially diagnosed with it as well as ADHD, CPTSD, depressive disorder, anxiety, OCD. I don't know if I said that already. <laughs> um, late not last year but the year before so my videos tend to branch out like I'll say a story and then it, I'll talk about something kind of in relation to that or something that just comes to mind but I'm gonna try my best to just stick to the point today and not elaborate too much on it but if anyone wants clarity on anything I've said or any of the points I've made I could happily do so because with all 50 points I could probably speak forever on it. <laughs> so I'm sitting at Oak Bay, just a beautiful site. I um I'll make sure to take a video for you to enjoy. And so oh and as well um as I mentioned about being undiagnosed um the history of autism as well um, we're learning is that girls kind of tend to d to display signs differently in some cases not always but I think that has a lot to do with and maybe this is already a known fact or maybe it's just something I thought up on my own that I haven't read but I can kind of understand why so in some ways say socially girls tend to be more social so they can kind of mask early on or they being social with one another is a huge key develop like for developmental learning and so when boys play they tend to be more competitive they play more independently they're you know they have their toys unless it's like organized sports but um just in my experience and I think most people um boys with their toys and their cars and stuff they're kind of more independent and then girls at a very young age will be social with their toys and they'll say like hello and they'll make them talk to one another so things like that really um pay, play a key factor I believe in that so it all depends on your circumstances like how you were raised and the environment you're brought up in and and just who you are as a person and where your skills lie so some things are just entirely out of your control no matter how hard you try or how hard early intervention happens. But, um, oh, <laughs> one more thing. So another thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I'll keep it short. We're five minutes in. I haven't even got to the first point yet. But the first main thing I'd like to say is that, um, unfortunately, I just have to say this to the point and try not to get emotional about it but I do have CPTSD which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder and most of it is due to my childhood trauma such as abuse neglect inside and out of the home um addictions just uh not getting the best care that one a child deserves essentially so I think one of the main reasons why I was overlooked is not just due to my age and 
the information not being there as much in school perhaps, but because my parents were not advocating for my health and well-being. So, yeah, but if you'd like to learn about my experience, please um, continue on with the video and perhaps you'll learn something about your child or someone close to you or if you want to learn about yourself or just about um just to listen because thank you for joining and don't forget to like comment subscribe because <laughs> it helps a lot with um my video reaching the right audience and my purpose in making these videos is to try to like reach out and to help others and while doing so it really helps me to be able to share this information and sort of unload <laughs> at times so number one for 50 signs i was an autistic child <laughs> undiagnosed one the five senses so first being touch um clothing i just i'm like i still to this day kind of like when i'm walking through the clothing aisle i'm constantly running my hands over the fabrics and just to see how things feel like oh that looks good let me see how it feels and i think i make a lot of my decisions based on that like with what i buy today but not as much as back then but the main point with um, touch back then is that I actually like refused to wear certain things like mittens and scarves and things that were like really restrictive. I just would not wear and often a lot of times like I lived in a climate that gets very cold in the winter in Manitoba and I got frostbite like many a times and even though the frostbite was pretty horrible um, it still never made me learn my lesson to dress warm in the cold. So that's the severity of my texture issues. And I think there's a lot to that, more to that too. Um, for one example, like my mom would call me the princess and the pea because I'd like need her to come fix my bedding because I could like something just felt out of like something just wasn't right or something was in there or <laughs> so things like that um I could probably come up with a lot more examples but I have so many things to talk about that I'm going to move on to the next one uh smell so certain smells would definitely bring on a headache like perfume and smoke and tar on the road and certain things like I don't know if it was so much the smell and the chemicals or if it was like just so unbearable like emotionally for me to be exposed to it that it would like bring on a headache but I would almost get like instant headaches as a kid quite often and thankfully I don't really get headaches much anymore and I don't get migraines and another thing is back then and to to this day I have a very heightened sense of smell like I can smell everything and anything and I'm always like asking people if they could smell that and they always say no almost always so very heightened senses um three is taste so very picky eater and not just you know everyone had their things they didn't like when they, when they were young but for me it was like certain textures and appearance like meat especially when things were left like the bones and everything um water tasted metallic to like water has a different taste no matter where you go things like that um and you know i think one of the reasons i kind of was forced to get over some of my um eating habits is because of the lack of nutrition the food insecurity at times so I kind of like out of starvation and hunger I would just eat whatever was there at times but there was definitely earlier on I refused I'd rather go to bed hungry than eat what was available so 
yeah that's something um for hearing so people would say i had selective hearing um loud sounds would be really upsetting like i'd have to cover my ears and with hearing i could not make out the words and songs a lot i don't know what kind of disorder that is i haven't really looked into it but i just I don't know if it's because it's more so music I've listened to on the radio from a young age and it's like there's a muffle or there's a, like a little bit of an electric sound like you know how autistic people can sometimes hear like rate like um hear electricity and people are like what <laughs> so I think that just interfered with but I don't know it's even more than that it's more severe than that I really don't know how to explain it, but I could honestly tell you I've heard songs hundreds of times, even songs I'm not fond of, like just on the radio or whatever, and I do not know all the words. I just simply cannot hear them, so I don't know what that really has to do with, but it has to do with hearing. Um, I cannot focus in loud rooms, especially when I was younger. Like, you know, even during exams, it would be pretty painful. I probably could have benefited from doing exams in a different room but the sound of like papers rustling and pens tapping and people tapping their foot and just anything like that was like took me a lot longer to do my work um five is vision so thankfully i've always had 2020 vision one eye is actually a little bit worse now Okay, so thankfully, um, <laughs> like I have good vision, but I have two astigmatisms, I was told. So God, <laughs> like it's really crazy, but I actually have a million diagnoses, like truthfully, <laughs> just really faulty DNA, <laughs> DNA in this one. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure we all have some, but it's just like, wow, <laughs> the more as I've gotten older and because I went, I was in denial about, a, well, all of my issues until my late 20s, until I just like couldn't handle it anymore and had like a mental breakdown and reached out for help for the first time. So if you feel like you're struggling and you're not where you are with, you know, you're not at the same level as your peers, there's no shame in it. Just like reach out for help. Don't wait until your late 20s to get help and learn self-love and self-acceptance um it's just made such a huge difference in how I see myself and how I can help myself and help others around me because you know when I know that I'm experiencing sensory overload or I feel like I'm gonna have a meltdown like I can I don't have to like lash out like I don't I'll still get irritable, but I'll just like remove myself from situations instead of being as moody. Like I just know that I have to kind of prioritize myself more and not feel so much guilt and shame about it. But um, back to vision. So eye contact has always been a problem. Like even making these videos, I should be looking at the camera the whole time. <laughs> but I just cannot. Um, well, first of all, I'm looking at a beautiful sight. But with people, like I tend to kind of glance. Like sometimes I can do the opposite and I'm like staring too much. But probably 90% of the time I'm not really looking at people right in the eyes like it's just a very uncomfortable feeling I don't know what it is it's like they can see into my soul or I can see into theirs or I don't know um and light I used to have a really bad well now I usually wear sunglasses all the time but um I used to have really bad light sensitivity like my eyes were just watering all the time and so it sucks when you're wearing makeup and stuff in your and then your makeup gets in your eyes so it makes it even worse but oddly enough like as watery as my eyes used to be back then now I feel like I experienced the opposite where they're kind of dry it's like all my tears I've used up <sighs> next is um six is mannerisms so 
I don't know. I don't know if I've what the link is exactly, but I do things that a lot of autistic people identify with, like T-Rex arms, like stand near there like this, <laughs> and broken wrist syndrome, like constantly resting my hand on my wrist like this, like even like sleeping on it like that. Um, I don't know if broken wrist syndrome is an actual diagnosis or if it's just what people call it, but that's something I definitely do. And speaking a lot with my hands. I mean, right now, one hand is on with the paper and the other hand is free to do things. But normally I'd be talking with both hands a lot. Um, this happened a little bit after childhood, but one of my first jobs as a server, I noticed because I was always doing things with my hands all the time and have really bad habits with my hands when I had this job and it was going from you know the, to take care of the customer's needs to go to the back in the kitchen I'd be walking back and forth like doing this with my hand and it's something I noticed about myself for the first time that they thought was unusual and I'm like okay what is wrong and why am I doing that and I looked it up and it, I thought it was alien hand syndrome. <laughs> like you don't have control over it. But now I can clearly see that I was stimming because it's like a loud environment. It's like the stress of taking care of everyone's needs. Um, I really don't recommend serving for autistic people. But on the other hand, like if you are, an, it did bring me out of my comfort zone and it brought my communication levels up many levels the years that I was doing that and it was supposed to be a temporary job but it kind of led into like probably four or five years worth of working as a server because the tips like I liked having the money daily which was nice um but it was very harmful in a lot of ways which I've mentioned before Seven is stance. So I tend to, especially as a kid, I would stand on like the outside of my foot when I'm just waiting around, whether it be for the bus. And another thing is I would have trouble standing still, like whether I'm on the phone or waiting for the bus or just standing in line and like pacing, pacing or else standing on one foot to the other, like things like that. It's kind of like it's a stim which I realize I have a lot of stims and stimming for me is, as I see it now, is like a release of energy. Like it's physically uncomfortable to stand there just so still or sit there still. And now I can kind of see it. I'm like, hmm, well, I wonder if that's why I have pain, so much pain when you're constantly moving and you're not allowing your body to rest. Um... Yes, so next, eight is speech. So I had delayed speech, but on the other hand, um, it was like something, like a flip switched or something, because I don't know if my parents are lying to me about this or what, but apparently I knew the Lord's Prayer word for word at like eight, between age one and two, and then suddenly, like even to this day, I couldn't tell you what it is, but I remember being at this age where it was kind of like that movie Baby Geniuses where you're like a genius and then suddenly it's like someone pulls out the plug and you kind of forget that portion of your life or something. But that honestly happened to me. Like somehow I knew the Lord's Prayer word for word before bed every night and then suddenly I just couldn't remember. So that tends to be something autistic... Um, the autistic community talks about is like regression in your skills kind of early on and another thing is when I was at a certain age I would constantly ask questions to learn and I was told by my um, abuser one of my abusers over and over again wow you ask a lot of questions so eventually I just felt so insecure that I stopped asking questions which is which in some ways is like I stopped learning and I think I carried that into school as well because I feel like I just stopped asking questions in life and 
that's a very, you know, hurtful, harmful thing. Kids should be able to ask questions. And another thing with my speech is, um, even now to this day, but especially more before, I would do say things like um, toothbrush when I'm talking about a pencil. Like, I don't know, just like it just spit. I can't, it spits out of my mouth and I just can't control it. Like, it's just a really strange thing. I don't know why, but that happens often where I just say the wrong thing, even though I'm thinking of the right thing. Um, I definitely would have benefited from speech therapy at a young age. Like, although, I don't know, I don't hear myself when I'm talking. Like, I don't see until I watch these videos, I don't see how much I stutter, stammer, whatever it is. I don't know because I've never been officially diagnosed with any verbal problems, but I just know that I do. I'm feeling a lot more mental clarity and energy this week because I've started to eliminate my food sensitivities, but some of the time in some of my videos, I'm stammering and stumbling. But yes, early intervention, seeing a speech therapist, that just wasn't going to be something that was an option for me as someone in an environment where my basic needs weren't being met. So things beyond that were def definitely not going to be. Nine is facial recognition and names. I used to be pretty good with that. Like I, there was a time like late into high school where I just knew every single person's like first and last name and I was just sh surprised when a friend of mine in the same grade said she didn't know everyone's name and a lot of people didn't tend to know everyone's name. They kind of just knew like their friends and classmates and stuff but I seem to know everyone's name in the whole school practically first and last name. So that was something I was good at before but now... I'm really bad with like names and I'm really bad with like facial recognition too. Like people recognize me right away or, and so that's interesting because, you know, there is regression that comes. Uh, autistic women can actually regress in their communication with age, which is kind of alarming. As I said, I wasn't going to, um, I said I wasn't going to elaborate on anything. And here I am with, um, I'm only on point nine of 15. So this might have to be several parts. Um, 10 collections. So my special interest was mostly collections. I feel like I definitely had different obsessions throughout, 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 but when doctors used to ask me that as I was, you know, discussing depression or things at times in my life, um, they would always ask me about special interests and I immediately would say no because I didn't know what that was even about or what that was linked to and I had really low self-esteem, so in my head like I didn't have the knowledge, understanding, or the skills that a lot of people seem to have who weren't autistic, but it turns out my special interest was collections. So I had movie stubs I collected from every movie, buttons, pins, CDs, DVDs, and clothing and shoes and candles and nail polish. Just anything becomes kind of a collection in excess, like things I'll almost never use, like books. I definitely get more of my information on my phone and I don't read as much as, as I should. It would be nice to get back into reading and get away from the screen every now and then. But it just seems like everything becomes a collection. So now that I'm living in a travel trailer where I don't have... I'm seeing a seal back down there. Aww. <laughs> anyway, um... Now that I'm living in a place that's so small, I was kind of forced to get rid of some of my collections, which wasn't the worst thing in the world because they were literally just sitting in bags, like have, serving no purpose. So now I pretty much just have a few collections and I'm trying my best not to grow them. 
<laughs> so going to the store and just window shopping is like one of my things that I'm doing lately like when I make my shorts and it's because it just feels good to like observe things and not buy <laughs> I have to save money and I don't have the space for it and I don't have the money Next, 11, comorbid conditions. So autistic people tend, and children tend to also, not always, but ADHD, depression, anxiety, gut health issues, OCD. With OCD, um, I create a lot of rituals for myself and like thinking and rules and things like that. Like I'd have to, I'd have to, um, like two steps between each block like of pavement on the sidewalk and or I'd have to get across the street before the light turned to the like flashing hand symbol and stuff like that and I used to hate body hair when I was like a kid going through puberty I shaved like my arms and legs and everything armpits I just hated the feeling of having my body hair. Um, I had like literally, I don't know how long, um, probably like a 15 year problem where if I'm like in class getting lectures and stuff or just any time, like what I was doing with my hands is like picking split ends. Like I couldn't leave my hair alone. So thankfully in my late twenties, when I, oh, like maybe a bit earlier than that when I was um a server my hair was up all the time and I couldn't like around that time it actually was helpful in other ways not just socially but because I was constantly hand washing um it kind of helped get rid of some of my bad habits and OCDs like that because you know it takes however many days to um, begin a habit it takes probably just as many or more to end a habit so uh, thankfully and then you know when I had my daycare I wasn't sitting there doing that because I was constantly observing the safety and well-being of the kids or interacting with them or taking care of their needs and stuff and washing my hands constantly so that was something that definitely ended like probably around age 26, 27. And with comorbid conditions, a lot of autistic people tend to have EDS or even fibromyalgia. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, but I um, am starting to believe that I have EDS. I haven't really looked into it more, but at a young age, like I've had like loose skin and I've talked about this before, but um, just things like uh, my knees hyperextend, like things like that, S and the soft skin, and there's a bunch of things that come with it, and it's it has a lot of the same symptoms as fibromyalgia, so it's definitely something I want to look into more, and with a professional, because back then, um, it was really hard for me to communicate with the specialists about what I was experiencing, and I just feel like the effort wasn't there on their part either sometimes, unfortunately. I had some pretty bad experiences. Twelve is I would play movies on repeat over and over, and I'm sure a lot of kids did that, but a lot. And it was always like The Little Mermaid, Five All Goes West, Now and Then, Nightmare Before Christmas, The Addams Family, and I would skip the sad parts all the time. And a lot of Disney movies, and I'm sure there's things I'm forgetting, but those are the main ones. And even now as an adult, like I could be scrolling, scrolling, scrolling on Netflix and nine out of 10 times I'll watch something I've already seen a million times. Like I love Coraline and uh, Spirited Away and St Studio Ghibli movies. Or, and yeah, so I tend to not care so much about pop culture and what's trending out there and I just kind of like what I like. 13. Um, the rules matter. So I think like that's one of the things like although I struggled academically and in certain ways like I was very strict about certain rules and I didn't like 
people who would kind of like break the rules. I can't really think of too many specific examples, but I just know that my way of thinking kind of interfered with some of my relationships at times just because I was so rigid in that way. And I was also, I hated being late and I would show up to things really early, like interviews. Sometimes I would arrive way too early and this was before I knew any better. And it was just hard for me to plan my, um, plan things like before an, uh, an appointment, I wouldn't, you know, make time to do things people do like clean and cook and whatever. It's kind of like, I have to get ready and go, even if that appointment's at like 2 PM. It's like a strange thing that I know some autistic people have mentioned, but that started at a young age. So for appointments, work, interviews, it's still something I kind of struggle with today. 14 is like sort of a form of mutism when I was younger. It was kind of strange. Like I was very much in my head and locked in my thoughts and it was like almost just kind of like being hyper aware and for fear of being judged and probably due to my childhood, but like, well, what I was experiencing at home and at school and stuff. But some of the time it's like, you know, if someone said something to me, I wouldn't come up with a good comeback until much later or even the next day. Like it would, I would think about it so much and, um, I just had trouble standing up for myself or at times, I think I got a little better with it at age, with age. Um, and then on their hands, I'm completely filter free. And sometimes I say really mean or rude things. I just don't even think, or sometimes I say things like accidentally that I don't mean and it insults like things like that it's like completely unintentional I don't like ever plan to purposely hurt people's feelings it's like things just spit out of me like filter free <laughs> and then but when I was younger I was a lot more on the mute side of things like not complete mute and not like an actual mute but just that I had such a problem with speech and um yeah, just you know, even being amongst friends and stuff, it kind of just seems like I was more just there amongst everyone, but I wasn't really a part of the conversation often. Next is 15 is meltdowns. So um, I was very stubborn. I would have meltdowns when I was tired as a kid. Like I... You know, if my parents were at some sort of family or friend event and brought us along, like I just, once I got to a certain point and I was tired, I was just like completely miserable and my needs were never like, you know, if I didn't feel comfortable sleeping wherever I was, which is a valid thing. Um, yeah, I just, so I was always look at, looked at like such a horrible and grateful kid but it was like I had a lot of needs that weren't being met I was autistic and my needs weren't being met and you know having a routine like a bedtime and things like that just it was all about the party and having a good time and not raising kids to um prioritize their health so with my meltdowns also I kind of cry to the point of um like hyperventilating or having trouble breathing and even with being consoled sometimes like I just couldn't just like snap my fingers and snap out of it like it would it's just something that I needed to do and then afterwards I'd be like extremely drained <laughs> and with meltdowns it was like back to the senses like sensory overload smells sounds textures just everything and with stubbornness like I refused to participate in certain things like song and dance it was like being young and not being free as a child like whether that be with autism or because of what was going on at home but it was like I was kind of hyper aware of myself at such a young age when most kids are kind of free to be themselves and have fun I just was like oh I don't want to do that I don't want to look silly or I was put down so much that I really thought I couldn't do anything like the other kids could so 
one page down two to go oh my god <laughs> Okay, so 16, counting rituals. I had a lot of counting rituals, like taking sips of water. I'd like count to 10. Um, steps on the sidewalk, as I kind of mentioned before. I would count cars and colors and things like that. 17, um, unaware sometimes and clumsy so even though I was kind of hyper aware sometimes I was very unaware in other ways like I would like I was the kid who was like in I don't know third grade or whatever picking my nose at the Christmas concert like <laughs> Ew. 18 fidgety always needing to be doing something with my hands it's just I can't even imagine being still. <laughs> so. <laughs> 18th. Oh, I just said that. 19. Um, unfortunately, like, as an autistic kid, you tend to be bullied. I was bullied by not only friends and peers and family. Like, lots of family were really rude to me because I'm sure that... My parents were expressing all my shortcomings to family members, so I was just, um, everyone had such high expectations for some reason, but they were allowed to have so many flaws themselves. Not me, though. Um, I was even bullied by teachers, like, at a really young age. My grade one teacher, my grade two teacher was pretty cruel, um, she was also my grade two teacher because I was held back and grade three teacher. Um, but shout out to grade four, Miss Villeneuve. She was actually pretty nice to me. And Mr. Scarpino in high school, they were really nice. I'm sure there are others who weren't so bad, but if there was, there were ones that were just flat out cruel to me. And then there were ones who were like, you could just tell they didn't like me. Like they might've not done anything but there are ones who would go out of their way to embarrass me, like a really sick, sadistic way. Like I'm already struggling at home. Not that they knew that, but still like who bullies a child? Anyway, um, but yeah, the bullying, I don't really need to elaborate on that. You know, it was everything from just me as a person or being, not being at the same point in life as my peers, but also being overweight too as a kid and well to this day I've always struggled with my weight 20 was as I mentioned I was held back I was a slow reader I was bad at math um I like could sometimes reread sentences over and over and over and just still not understand so some things just took me a lot longer but what I didn't know is I do have dyslexia. Um, I don't know when I was or wasn't tested for that, but I mean, there are clear indications. I just didn't know the name of it um, all the way up until, well, to this day. But like when I'm writing notes quickly, I'm writing like other letters in front of the other and constantly like fixing my mistakes. So everything takes a lot longer when you're a dyslexic person. And when I got my first cashier job, I was even like reading some of the numbers completely backwards. So you can understand probably now why I'm like bad at math and all these things and kind of why I just gave up in some ways. And also when doing tests and exams, that was really hard because like I'm still writing, you know, when things are under a time limit and I'm writing things the wrong way like putting a t or h before the t or whatever it is or even putting the words backwards um it's just kind of interesting sometimes it's like okay did people just ask me if i was seeing words backwards because <laughs> if they did i would have said no i'm not seeing words backwards because i'm looking at the word and i'm not like counting, I'm not seeing G N I T N U O C. I'm not seeing it completely backwards, but as I'm doing my work, as I'm whatever, it's coming out backwards. So, how is a literal child supposed to know that? But anyway, um, 
and I was almost held back for a second time. So in grade two, apparently that was like the worst time for me. Things were probably not at their peak of, it was kind of like at the peak of being aware that other people's surroundings were nothing like mine and people didn't have to fear their dads in every single household and things like that where, so I was just starting to recognize how other people's existences weren't like mine and things might have been worse that year, those years in terms of their mental health. So I don't know, but I was really struggling around then and I wasn't, I was behind everyone. So I was a learning disabled child, but I wasn't getting the support I needed, is what I'm trying to say. 21, I was very gullible. People could just tell me pretty much anything and I would believe it. And I, it's kind of like, even to this day, kind of the last to get the joke and too lit literal. I think I'm a lot better now, but there are times. <laughs> 22, very sensitive. I didn't like teasing cried easily. 23, I played independently young. Um, there's a video of me with my like some family relatives and they're trying to play with me and I'm like no like I wanted to just be by myself and I was very much in my own world and doing my own thing which most as I see it now because I had a home daycare like kids are usually very involved with their family and friends and stuff and I was very independent and I had a lot of a lot more imaginative play rather than verbal so everything was kind of going on in my head and not acting out things the way other kids do 24 trouble maintaining relationships so yes yeah, starting at a young age with whether it be for my strong beliefs or my shortcomings or my black and white thinking or um, just a lot of things and that's something I still struggle with today. 25, masking to burnout. So I had no awareness of what it was called back then, but yes, I would um, definitely, you know, I tried to be like everyone else and And with that comes masking where you're trying to be like everyone else, but you're not. You just have, you know, everyone's different and it's okay. <laughs> As I say that with my arms crossed. 26. Okay, so 26, insomnia, young. So I remember this a lot, um... There were just times I could not fall asleep, especially if there was anything important the next day, like the first day of school or some sort of event, something I was looking forward to. I just like had so much trouble falling asleep, but so I think before that it was just, I think at times it didn't matter. Like when I was younger, it didn't matter what the events were. It was just something I was experiencing. Like, and another thing kind of went hand in hand with my OCD once because there was a time I was like pulling out my hair and probably due to the stress of the house household environment, but I was pulling out my hair and like pulling out the follicles. And I know that's like so disgusting, but I was just a kid struggling in so many ways. And I remember doing that until pretty much the sun rose the next day and then and then I asked my mom if I had a bald spot and she took me to the mirror and I did have one. So <sighs> sometimes I worry and wonder about that today if I'm already experiencing hair loss there because I did that so young. Um, but and then with that, you know, staying up all night, it's like I'd just be exhausted during the day. Like there were times I could like easily fall asleep on bus rides and there were times I missed stops. And, you know, I just get so drained at school and so not only poor nutrition and not having a good sleep, but yeah, just or um, I need to, to nap a lot after school. I remember that sometimes I would wake up and so I'd nap after school. I wake up and it's 730 
p.m. but I think it's a.m. and I'm getting ready for school. I'm sure that sure that happened to a lot of people but it happened to me a few times or more often. Um, 27, oh, uh, yeah, 27, thrives on routine. I thrived on a routine as an autistic kid, but I didn't get the routine. So the only time I was like really thriving is like when we'd go off to girl guides and camp and we had a very strict routine, like times like that were really awesome because the routine was just non-existent at home. It was always like, oh, my parents just woke up when they felt like it because it's the weekend. And so they'd cook when they felt like it. I'd have to like knock on the door, like as a young child saying like, hello, I have basic needs. Uh. <laughs> it's impossible to go through talking about autism and not bring up a lot of the really negative um trauma and this is just like barely even the surface of it um 28 i did a lot better in one-on-one -on -one relationships i tended to even like three people in a group those two people if they were like neurotypical they tend to or even if they were no neurodivergent, they just tended to like kind of be in sync with one another. And I was just kind of, I don't know <laughs> how to explain it, but just, um, that's always kind of been me. Like even groups I was a part of, I only pretty much had like one best friend at a time. And in big groups, I would get overstimulated and feel left out. Like, I'd be at things and it's like, I think start of my, per or some of my personality started to come out like later into high school. But in those earlier years, it was um, a lot tougher. 29. Things seem to come naturally for others. So... Even to this day, but back then, like, I had to work really hard for um, anything that I've achieved. Like, it just seems like people could get the concept, whether it be homework or with, um, you know, pop quizzes and just anything like, you know, where you watch a video and then you have to give the key points. Like, I just couldn't remember the same way others did and so and today because I'm struggling in all these different ways and I have like a physical disability it's just um I just have to really work and masking so young was extremely hard um it leads to burnout and yes I'm starting to lose um my examples because I'm probably burnt out right now but uh 30 is I mimicked people so I remember just like repeating things the way that they said it because it would either make me laugh or I was like trying to remember how to say a word like that was part of my learning I would and then even to this day sometimes if I like hear a word I haven't heard before I would kind of like repeat it over and over in my head to remember it or sometimes it just like feels good saying it or it does something for my brain. It like tickles my brain in a good way to like repeat things. And 31, astrology. So in elementary school, I got this astrology booklet. So at such a young age, that was one of my main interests. It was like, I knew every single person's birthday and star sign, like in my closest group and even some others. And it would have like their characteristics it was actually a birthday book so it had every single birthday 365 days and I wrote their names and their birthdays in it and then I would kind of read to see if what characteristics linked up and I kind of just think of that now as like a really interesting thing as like a child <laughs> like not high school not middle school like elementary school and I think maybe that's possibly why I was able to develop some of my skills socially further because I was, that was like one of my interests to try to like be like others and try to mask 
so young and seem normal, even though I wasn't normal. Um, 32 motor skills. So I was just behind others. I wasn't taught those things at home and I learned from neighbors or friends and, but I just had a hard time. I, maybe I just felt like giving up easily because when I was being helped by my dad, that discomfort of being in close proximity with certain people, like made me just freeze and give up. But, um, like my nine year old friend taught me how to tie my shoes. So I wasn't tying my shoes till I was nine, which I'm sure is much later than most. And riding a bike took a lot longer, just a lot of things like that. Um, 33 is the bus. I would literally get like so irritated and like on the verge of a meltdown riding the bus without headphones. So whether it be like listening in on really ignorant conversations amongst other people or noises or people eating apples and sh um, people like being show offs where they're just saying silly things to try to get the attention of everyone. Things like that would just like really irritate me. And anytime I had a bus ride where like my electronic device was dead or um whatever I didn't have headphones it was a pretty miserable day for me and I know I did say this list is childhood but I'm talking childhood like literally infancy all the way to like right you know high school and let's see Thirty-four. So I would get exhausted during and after social settings. Exhausted, but also um, irritable. Okay, one last page. So as I said, black and white thinking. So 35, black and white thinking. So, and I just kind of mentioned this already, but you know, it makes people feel uncomfortable sometimes. I used to be more of a black and white thinker and now I'm so much of a kind of grayscale thinker or like can see both sides a lot but I am 35 years old so we're talking I've come a long way from childhood to now and that's why I have such a problem with some people who say like oh autism is just becoming so popular and some people only identify with some of this stuff and like just because you can see me flapping my gums for hours and hours about myself and about all the reasons I'm autistic and some autistic people aren't able to do that. That's why there's a spectrum for a reason. That's why there's different levels of it. So, um, like if you're judging me as a 35 year old adult, you're not seeing how I was as a child. Like I'll have to pull out some home movies someday. <laughs> 36, shy. So it's kind of like I went through different phases back and forth. But younger was more like, you know, in my own world, to shy, to like, then some people would call me mature for my age as a kid. It's kind of like I just couldn't get involved with how other kids thought and how other kids played and I preferred to be close to adults. I don't know if it's because I was bullied and, and um, kids to me were kind of like unpredictable in their ways and, but I remember being told that and I'm sh I think I was like mature seeming even though I was like not doing well in school but then when I got to high school I can see that I was very immature <laughs> at times very mature and responsible in some ways and then extremely mature immature and probably to do with my ADHD side like just a lot of trouble concentrating in school and what I wanted to say about that too going back to um being bullied like even by educators it's just like you know I was always kind of made to feel like oh I'm just lazy and I'm not trying but it's like I'm literally just having so much going on like from sensory overload to things going on at home to um could have I have tried harder yes but no one was trying very hard for me at home so I was just doing the best I can and basically raising myself <sighs> 
37, didn't understand lit literature very well or poems. So I almost always interpret like songs and writing and poems like in my complete own way. I just don't, um, I don't know why. I guess it's just being autistic. Like everyone kind of can see things one way and I see things my way. <laughs> and autistic people see things their own way or it's due to the lack of education or people around us influencing us so that we do understand meanings a bit more like I don't know if it's called idioms or what but a lot of apparently autistic people like that but I really don't I don't d use them often at all like that's I don't know one of those autistic things I just <laughs> You'll almost never hear me say them. Or maybe I say them and I don't even realize. 38. Friends acknowledge my shortcomings often. And even as young as grade two, um, I remember I did go through some sort of testing around that time, which I'm surprised they didn't. I don't know if it just completely went over my parents' head or they told me and they thought I knew what that meant or... There never continued to be any sort of discussion about it afterwards or any sort of intervention to help me or speech therapy or learning or a tutor, just nothing. So um, I just remember specifically like around this time when I was held back in grade two, a friend of mine was held back, but she ended up going to sort of like a special needs school and my friend's like purposely pointed that out to me I'm like well my other friend didn't you know didn't make it to grade three either and they would say yeah but she's dyslexic <sighs> anyway 39 well I'm dyslexic too <laughs> by the way just somehow I was overlooked or my parents didn't want to put me in special school. Who knows? I don't even want to ask at this point because memories don't seem to be too accurate these days. And well, my main abuser is deceased. Um, 39, bad habits. So with stimming, I like you know I'd rip my nails off I've always pretty much had short nails there's times in my life where I've grown them but I almost always end up it's a very short-lived thing and like I can't help but leave things alone like if I have a scratch like picking you know like those gross habits and itching like itching could be part of fibromyalgia or my food sensitivities but it could also just be like a nervous thing I don't exactly know but just a lot of bad habits with my hands 40 so we're almost finished <laughs> we're almost finished you're doing great <laughs> please don't give up on me yet um 40 I liked things that weren't cool like by a certain age other people deem things as not cool and I kind of always like I still had like Spice Girl Barbies like when I was, I don't remember, maybe grade four, grade five. Other people weren't really bringing toys like that to school and that's something that I did. And I liked music, like I liked a lot of pop music when I was a kid, like Backstreet Boys and stuff like that. And so once I got to middle school and everyone thought, the stuff I liked wasn't cool. I kind of realized that I liked things that were a lot that were uncool and maybe it changed some of my habits around that time. But on the other hand, I'm kind of grateful for that because I got into music that was a really good outlet and I went to shows and bands and I got into more like emo or alternative stuff, which I don't mind at all. So kind of thank you for that. <laughs> getting me out of the pop stage of my life but a lot of autistic people tend to kind of have interests that others no, don't find as interesting or definitely not cool and now I would say like if I could redo my life knowing what I know now things would be completely different like I wouldn't care so much about what people think but when you're young you know you want people to like you and when you're already 
struggling in so many ways you especially want people to like you so you adapt like kind of like a chameleon um yeah it took me longer to change some of my immature interests a lot longer like i some of the kids in grade even two three four were like extremely mature and focused on school and driven and even their conversations they just didn't even seem like kids they seemed like full-blown adults <laughs> it's so weird um 41 i still don't care about pop culture so like i said when when i've answered these other questions like from jubilee media videos and it's like you know do they accurately portray autism in media and i can't answer that because i just don't pop culture has never been that important to me i don't have like i've never really had idols pop culture is just not important to me now i don't care about i've never cared really about stars birthdays or had like specific idols i kind of just have liked bands and stuff i know pop culture can also be extremely important to some autistic people just but just for me um because pop culture, I'm thinking more in terms of, like, what the cool kids like and stuff. So, autistic people tend to be more like, I like what I like. Whether it be, like, anime or their special hobbies and interests. So, 42. I used to draw and doodle pretty much, like, the same thing all the time. Like, eyeballs and that S. Like, Superman S. Or whatever. And flowers and things like that like constantly kind of the same things and I wish I had kind of developed more into my artistic abilities because I feel like that would have been a really great outlet for me but I kind of I enjoyed it up into a point and then I got to a point where I focused mainly on friendships so I wasn't studying or any of those things and so 43 I kind of mentioned this already, but repeating words um, in my head. Uh, maybe I did. I feel like I said that already. Mm. Well, mimicking. I said mimicking, and this one's more about repeating. So, whether it be like a song or something I heard like I said I would um just repeat out loud and for some reason it's like a good release 44 is I would line things up as autistic kids do and I would put things into categories a lot like all the red things together and this and that so I do things more like by organization and not by play a lot when I was young Oh, and even when eating, like I would put the col same colors together, like same candy colors together and things like that. 45 animals. Um, I think a lot of autistic people really like animals, but even more so is probably why I became vegetarian, like in the ninth grade when I was about 15. And so sensitive to animals and animal welfare that... I don't like purposely, didn't purposely step on ants and things like that at a young age. And, and in school, like in science class, like in elementary school, things where it was, they're just teaching us about nature where, you know, the food chain and things like that. And if an animal was getting hurt, like being used as food and we were witnessing that on the TV, like that would make me so upset. I'd cry and go out in the hallway. <laughs> I remember that happening at least once or twice. 46, uh, less facial expressions. So back then I used to definitely be more blank um, in my facial expressions and probably what's prevented me from wrinkling a lot. I mean, I do have some bags, but I guess I'm getting pretty wrinkly for 35, but some people have a lot of smile lines and I've noticed that it could be from being overweight or it could be from a number of things. But I used to have more of a blank expression 
even in photos and stuff but now I feel like I'm almost the opposite well at least in my interactions with others I feel like I'm definitely more smiley than other people so it's kind of funny how we go from one way to the other like I'm definitely more laughy jokey smiley more than the average person these days and back then I was the opposite 47 impulse control so with eating at times carbs that could be due to starving at times and then overloading at times not getting proper protein so having too much carbs but it starting at a young age impulse control with eating was a thing even to now I'm just slowly as I'm getting to know myself more and more and more in this last year I've naturally for the first time in my life lost um 40 pounds I've been staying at the 40s for a long time lately but I have restricted more again recently now that I've beat my eating disorders thank god and it did worry me at first thinking oh no if I start restricting then I'm gonna start feeling guilt if I ever have anything bad but so far I've been able to maintain my food um eliminating my food sensitivities and I hope to stick with it and I hope that if I do have something on my food sensitivities list someday that I don't have those extreme feelings of guilt and where I feel like I have to take actions so other things um movements with the impulse control um addictions kind of like all or nothing sort of mentality like I used to abuse alcohol in social s situations and with eating, it's kind of like all or nothing. I just ate all the bag of chips, all the candy in one sitting. Like I couldn't just leave it alone. I had to finish. So I don't know if that's part of like the food insecurity thing or like I said, back to um, impulse control. But so one of the reasons I don't even drink today is because thankfully in the last probably like five years or so, I haven't had any sort of dependency on alcohol. Um, I have used it in social situations, but nothing like I used to and so one of the reasons I don't drink today and I don't do drugs not even smoke weed on occasion is because well there's many reasons for that but because of my family history and because I see what it does to people but because of me knowing myself knowing I have an addictive personality knowing I have OCD knowing I have eating disorders like I don't want, I have an addictive personality, so I'm trying to find a different outlet. And so far, I feel like doing these videos has kind of helped me a bit because it's helped focus my attention towards something else and not some sort of bad habit. This has become sort of like an outlet as well as a, um, an outlet and... this has become an outlet as well as sort of like a hobby, like to learn more about myself, help others learn about themselves or others, and just something to do with my time as I'm not working as much lately. 48, so we're almost there. <laughs> Intense emotions, so feeling everything so personally. So I know people say, oh, if you call yourself an empath, you're a psychopath. But no, I'm like an extreme, so extremely sensitive, but extremely emotional, like I've said about animals and all these other things. But um, just like I can feel the energy around me. And in some ways, like being autistic is a gift in some ways. Like we do have these strange things that make us different. Um, amongst other like we struggle in some ways but we kind of excel in others and um I don't mind being emotional I mean back then it was hard but now it's like well you know we kind of need people to be a little bit more sensitive today people are a bit kind of shallow superficial and hurtful with online bullying and whatnot and even in the workplace and other places. So it would be nice if um, people could be a bit more emotional at times. But with that, um, it's just feeling intense emotion and feeling others' pain and others' happiness. And like, 
I'll cry at everything like weddings, um, American Idol when they do past stories of like families losses or poverty or just whatever it is. Um, things get to me easily. I cry in movies. Sometimes I cry in movies just even in like a Disney movie at a good at a happy scene like that the ending of a movie not like it's not always like sadness and sorrow it's like I just um <laughs> feel a lot so 49 taken advantage of so I think just with my vulnerability at times um my gullibility is that even a word being gullible um naive as I was younger um just hoping to trust I'm pretty much trying to find understanding trust and respect amongst everyone outside in the world and not because I didn't receive it at home so I just tend to I don't know they say that narcissists tend to gravitate towards vulnerable people because they can tell that we're weak and in my experience that has been very real <sighs> last is probably so many things I'm completely unaware of as I'm only really it's like I'm very new to learning about autism I mean being 35 years old and only just really learning about autism in my very late 20s to early 30s to now it's like there's still so much to know um there was a, definitely a denial at times it's kind of like a balance it's like okay, it's 100% me. Is it me? Well, how? Like, just trying to piece it all together. But um, I know for sure with like a thousand percent certainty it is me and it has helped me in so many ways. It's just that I kind of focused more on the label. It's like, okay, like now I understand why things were they where they were and why everything was way more difficult than it needed to be. But then... Um, what was I saying with that? Just, um, there's still so much to me that I probably don't even recognize. And I'm sure experts or others who are more educated in autism would understand. Or when I say, oh, I really struggle in math and I'm dyslexic. Um, you might know the actual other terms or all this other stuff that I've said. Um, I can kind of just barely remember the terms of it all but I um maybe that's a video for another day all my disabilities and I include <laughs> oh all you can do is laugh about it because I mean I'm laughing because I mean it was a real struggle as I was younger but I'm finally in a really good place mentally and emotionally I know at times in my videos I do seem very sad lonely and depressed based on the topics but that's not really me day in day out five seven days a week three and 365 days a year it's like it's just me expressing the pain levels and trying to let others know that they're not alone in that so so yeah that's my video <laughs> my god how many hours was <laughs> 50 signs I was an autistic child or yeah <laughs> anyway thank you so much for um your support please again like comment your experience subscribe to help a disabled struggling person <laughs> Um, I don't intend to become a millionaire or something. I know that a lot of small channels can go years and years and years and still not get very many views. I'm not doing this for fame and fortune. I'm doing this to just reach out to others, to help myself. And at the very end, if I could make a little money, like if I could just get to the bare minimum and have like $10 a day, I'd be like, woohoo! <laughs> But yeah, we'll see about that. But yeah, thank you again. And um, if you just have any comments or feedback about anything I'm doing, then um, I'll happily hear it. 
maybe it won't always be completely well received if it's like very offensive but if it's uh said with kindness or good intent then <laughs> it'll be fun but yeah okay I don't know how to end this right now it's like I was talking for so long I don't know how to end my video I'm sure I lost missed out on a lot of points too okay thanks bye